Welcome to our Wealth Mentality course. We are so glad that you're here with us. Thank you for clicking in and being a part of this course. We know you're going to find incredible value in what we teach. It's going to be a great day for you. I hope that what's happening right now is that you're sitting around with your family and you have three or four of you sitting there ready to learn about Wealth Mentality. Because remember, this is not just for adults. Your kids can understand these concepts. In fact, in this course, I'm teaching to a group of about 20 kids between the ages of nine, actually I think we had an eight-year-old, and up to about 14 or 15. And they did fantastic. They learned so much. They gained so much value from what we taught. But it's not just for them. You can also learn from it. And so thank you again for coming. We're going to talk so much about the wealth mentality, what it takes to have a wealth mentality, what wealth really means. And we're going to give you incredible value that's going to form a foundation so you can take this wealth journey with us. Okay, guys, welcome to our course. This is called our Wealth Mentality course, and I'm really, really excited for you guys to be here. Um, you're going to learn some really cool things about how we should think about how we should go after and how we should use wealth. And we're actually even going to talk about the word wealth because it's, I bet we think about wealth a little bit differently than most people think about wealth. So that's all going to be happening today. Um, but to start out, most of you know, but my name is Nephi Zufelt. Uh, I'm going to be teaching today about wealth mentality. And I wanted to start with a story because I like to tell stories and it's just fun. So you guys have to sit through my story, okay? Um, I want to tell you, we have to go way back, uh, like 26 years. So we're going way back in time before any of you were born. And I was about your age. So uh, this story, I think I was about 12, maybe 13 when this happened. Um, but to understand the story, you need to understand that um, I grew up in a, a little trailer house. Does everyone know what a trailer house is? Shake your heads, yeah, okay. So I lived in a little trailer house that had two bedrooms and one bathroom and there were seven of us. Can you guys see a little bit of a problem with two bedrooms and one bathroom and seven people? So my parents got one bedroom, and then the five of the rest of us got the other bedroom, the five kids. So we had like double stacked um, uh, bunk beds, and we had all kinds of fun things. And then after a few years, my parents added another trailer, and they lined it up next to the first one, and it became a double wide trailer. Okay, And so we had additional two additional rooms, and we felt like kings because it was so much bigger. Um, but when we were growing up, we didn't have a lot of money. And I would say that we were poor for a really long time. And as a kid, I didn't really know that we were poor because my dad worked really, really hard and to make sure that we didn't feel poor. Um, and he, he, there was always food on the table. We didn't have to like beg or scrounge or anything like that. Um, but we were pretty poor. And I never realized it till I was about 12 years old. Uh, and this story happened at that point. When I was 12, um, I was growing really, really fast. So I'm pretty tall. I'm not huge, but I'm pretty tall. But as a 12-year-old, I was growing like so fast that my parents couldn't keep clothes on me, right? I don't know if any of you guys have that problem, but every time I bought a pair of pants, like two days later, they were too short or my shirts were always too short. And I was like real thin. I mean, I was like, my femur was like a toothpick. It was so skinny. And... Um, my parents had a really hard time keeping me in clothes. And about the time I was 12, I, uh, I, I don't remember if I ruined a pair of pants or I just outgrew them, but I remember waking up one day and going to my mom and saying, I don't have any pants. I have nothing to wear. And she was like, well, I have a pair of pants for you. And we go into her room and she pulls out this box and she pulls out this pair of pants. And I'm like, oh good, there's a pair of pants here. And, uh, and I grabbed them, and I'm like, those look a little weird. And I pulled them out, and I remember like putting on one leg and then the other leg. And as I was pulling them on, they were kind of tight. And I pulled them up, and I got about to here, and I looked down, and I realized these pants are weird. They were like straight here, and they got about to here, and then they went out really, really wide. Like the fabric was huge. I mean, it was like sticking out this far on both sides. And when I walked, it sounded like I was like a, a marching band because it was swishing. And, and, uh, and I was like, what is going on? And I was, I was petrified. Now, you guys might think I'm, I'm pretty old, 
And maybe like in the 1980s, that was cool. It was not cool in the 1980s to wear, wear what was called bell-bottom pants. They were enormous. And it was, um, it was very uncool to have bell-bottom pants at that time. And so I'm a 12-year-old, and I was like a 12-year-old that was already afraid of people. Like I, I hated when people noticed me. I liked to kind of sink into the back. And I, I didn't like to be noticed at all. I didn't like to talk to people. I was afraid of talking to people. And so I remember walking out to the bus in my swishy pants, my bell-bottom swishies, and I got out there, and I get on the bus, and like I'm walking down that middle row, and I just hear, I can already start to hear people like talking about my pants. And my, my 12-year-old heart just like shriveled up, and I was just like, um, and I put my head down. And I get to school, and I walk to class, and I hear people starting to make fun of my pants. And I, it was about lunchtime. I remember going in the bathroom, and somebody had just been teasing me about my pants. And I was just like, I, I went in the bathroom, and I started to like cry a little bit. I was, I was devastated because it was just, this was horrible. And I blamed my mom. I was so mad at my mom that she'd make me wear these pants, right? And so as I, I went through all of that, at the end of that day, I went home and I'm like, I'm never wearing these pants again, mom. You cannot make me wear these pants. And I remember my mom saying, Nephi, that's all we have. And I said, I want more pants. I want different pants and I want them now. And my mom said, we cannot get you more pants. We don't have money to buy more pants and we don't have more pants. And I realized for the first time in my life, holy smokes, we're really, really poor. And I don't really like that feeling. And I don't, remember, I don't know if that was like the, the defining moment of when I decided, but when I was a young kid, I decided I didn't want to be poor when I grew up. And even more, I wanted to be rich, right? I wanted to have nice motorcycles and nice cars and nice houses. And I want to be able to travel the world because I wanted to be rich. I never, ever wanted to feel the way I felt that day with my bell-bottom swishy pants, okay? Now, by show of hands, how many of you guys have ever thought to yourself, when I grow up, I want to be rich? Quite a few of you, right? And when I talk about being rich or being wealthy, like if I say to you, man, that guy's really wealthy. Do you guys think that, by show of hands again, do you envision somebody that has a lot of money, that has a car, a nice house? If that's who you envision, raise your hand. All right. So today, in our society, most people think about being wealthy as having lots of money. And in fact, if you go to the dictionary, when it looks up, we look up the word wealthy, it's defined as an abundance of material possessions. Now, those are a lot of big words. So let's just take it. Basically, what that means is to be wealthy, by the world's definition, means that we have lots of money and lots of stuff. That's how the world defines wealth. And so when we all talk about wealth, that's what we think of. But you know what's interesting? It's not always been that way. That's not always what it's been to, meant to be wealthy. So I want you guys to go back in time with me, even farther than when I was a 12-year-old. We're going to go way back in time, okay? We're going back to old England. So we, when I talk about old England, I want you guys to envision like knights on horses with helmets and, and armor and swords. Can you envision that with me? Jousting. Kings and queens and courts, okay? So back in old England, they didn't have the word wealth. The words that they had were well, not like the well we talk about, like I'm doing well, but this is well, W-E-A-L. And the other word they used was wella. These are the two words that eventually became our modern words wealth. But you know what? Well and wella, they didn't mean to have money. Well and well meant to be happy, fulfilled, and good, oops, well-being. So back then, what it meant to be wealthy or wella meant that you were happy and fulfilled. It had nothing to do with money. Isn't that interesting that wealth had nothing to do with money back when it was back in that time? 
but over some, somehow, over time, it became associated with money. So let's think about how could that have happened. So I, I want you guys back with me. We're still back in Old England, okay? Back in Old England, um, when you had knights and kings and queens, the people that we normally associate with that, that time period, the guys jousting out front, all of those people were nobles, which meant that they were the kings and queens or someone that they, they knew or someone part of their family, and they were of noble birth. And if you were of noble birth, then you automatically could own property, you could own land, you could have riches, you could have servants and slaves, and all of the things, all of the material possessions you could have. So there were two classes of people though. If you were a noble, that's the life you lived, what was the other class of people? The peasants, right? The slaves are peasants. And the peasants lived a very different life. The life of a peasant meant that you could never own land. Even if you had the money to buy land, you couldn't own it because you weren't noble. You couldn't have a lot of money. Everything that you did when you worked really, really hard, everything that you made went to the noble that owned the land that you lived on. And they would give you a little bit back to live on. And so the life of a peasant was very, very different than the life of a noble. Quite different, right? Land and ownership and, and the ability to improve. And here's the other thing. If you were a noble, you could be the worst noble in the entire world. You could be a horrible noble. You could do terrible things and you'd still be a noble. Or you could be a peasant that was incredibly good, that was smart and intelligent, could do so many things, the best peasant ever. And guess what you were? You were still a peasant. You couldn't become a noble. You couldn't go from being a peasant to being a noble. So it's very different than the world we live in now, right? Like people that work hard now can improve themselves. They can become something. But back then, you were either noble or you weren't. And it all depended on where you were born and who were your parents. So now you're with me, right? So we understand that system. Now let's go back to Wella. You're a peasant. And I come to up to you and I'm like, hey, how's it going? How's your, how are you doing? How are you, how's your Wella? How's your wealth? How are you feeling? Are you happy and fulfilled? How's your Wella? And a peasant who every single day spends all of their time trying to just have food for their family, how was their Wella? Good or bad? Thumbs down, right? And you went to a noble. How was their Wella? It's probably pretty good. Now, there probably there was exceptions to that, but they were probably feeling pretty good. And so what happened was, as this system separated people into peasants and nobles, this idea of Wella became, if, if someone had Wella, they were probably a noble. And what did nobles have? Money land and servants. They had material possessions. And if you didn't have Wella, you were a peasant and you were poor. And so over time, we changed the word from well and Wella to wealth. And instead of thinking about happiness, fulfillment, and good well-being, we now think about material possessions, money, cars, and houses. So it changed. I don't think it should have changed. I understand why it changed, but I wish it hadn't. And here's why I wish it hadn't. Think about in your lives, if you've ever, have you ever met somebody that had a lot of money, that had cars and houses and all of those things, but they weren't very happy? There's a lot of people out there that have wealth, but they don't have wealth. They're not happy, they're not fulfilled, and they don't have good well-being. And so you guys, the point of saying all of this is that the word that we use, for the word we use, wealth, is really misrepresented. It's not the right word. Because we associate wealth with being rich, having lots of money. And in this class, I want you guys to throw out the definition of wealth that says that you have lots of money. And I want to change that so when you think of wealth, and you think of what I call wealth mentality, it has very little to do with money. It has some things to do with money. We're going to talk about that. But it has a lot more to do with happiness, fulfillment, and personal well-being. 